Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's Audit and Governance Committee, 31st January 2024. Uh, I could just remind everyone that the meeting is being recorded and will be put up on YouTube. Uh, yeah, sorry, 8th of Feb. That's when it was given out. Uh, moving on to agenda item number one, uh, apologies for absence. We've got uh, Councillor Daniels. Uh, anybody else? We're all here. Uh, item number two, minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, could I ask for a proposal and a seconder, please? Uh, Councillor Clark and Councillor Price, the two Bens. Uh, item number three, declarations of interest. Nope. Item number four is the Internal Audit Quarter Free Progress Report and External Quality Assessment Action Plan. Uh, and I'll hand over to the Audit Manager, please. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to present my Quarter Three Progress Report on the activities of Internal Audit up to and including 31st December 2023. I ask that Committee notes both my Progress Report and also the progress in completing the recommendations made within the External Quality Assessment Action Plan. The work of Internal Audit is outlined within Appendix 1 of my report, and I'd like to highlight that as at the 31st December 2023, we had completed 31% of the overall plan, which equates to five out of the 16 audits planned for 2023-24. Committee will note that this is significantly below the profile plan completion and appropriate contingency arrangements have been put in place to increase this overall percentage by 31st of March. I'd like to highlight that these arrangements include the use of external contractors BDO and ETEC business services, who provide our IT audit provision, and also the use of the Principal <coughs> Auditor from Litchfield District Council in relation to our shared service arrangements. To provide assurance to the committee, I can report that of the 11 remaining audits, which as at the 31st December were in the plan, three audits were at draft report stage, and two of these have now completed, with one awaiting management comments to finalise the report. Two audits were commenced prior to the 31st December and field work is ongoing and a draft report or draft reports will be issued shortly for these reviews. A further two audits, the field work had, had, has been started since the 31st December and the remaining four audits have been fully scoped and briefed and start dates agreed with management in mid to late February. I continue to have regular weekly and fortnightly meetings with all audit service providers and have confidence that we will complete at least 80% of the audit plan by the 31st of March 2024. This equates to 13 out of the 16 planned audits for this current financial year. I would like to highlight to committee that our percentage completion only includes audits that have been fully completed and the reports fully finalised with management. I would also like to highlight that due to the number of reports and reviews that we carry out when we complete one audit that is effectively six and a quarter percent of the audit plan so i am fully expecting that there will be a number of the other audits that we will bring in by the 31st of march so i believe that whilst i've i've given an assurance around 80 I'm, percent i'm i'm more than likely that we'll hit 90 percent which is our kpi by the 31st of march I continue to monitor the outstanding audit recommendations, and this is highlighted within Appendix 1 of my report. In summary, as at the 31st December 2023, we had 52 outstanding audit recommendations, and those related to 12 high priority, 28 medium, and 12 light, low priority recommendations. I would like to highlight that within, within my report, the, the graph on which is included, which shows a line of progression for low, medium and high recommendations. The key in, in, at the bottom of that report is actually incorrect. And basically the red line should be the high recommendations and the blue line is low recommendations. I'd like to highlight to committee as at the 30, 31st of March 2023, we had 66 outstanding audit recommendations and there has been a general downward trend in respect to the number of recommendations out outstanding. 
I continue to follow up all outstanding audit recommendations with assistant directors and will continue to provide an update to this committee. As previously reported to this committee, internal audit is required to comply with the public sector internal audit standards. And Appendix 2 of my report highlights the recommendations raised and the actions taken to implement these by the 31st of March 2024. I can report that from the 12 review or consider recommendations, we currently have two which are currently outstanding. Additionally, we have one of the six recommendations which was in the suggested enhancement category, which also is currently outstanding. I can report that with the current cycle of audit planning for 2024-25, these three remaining recommendations will be fully implemented by the 31st of March. I'm more than happy to take any questions that you may have. Uh, cheers for that. Uh, anybody got any, any questions? No? Uh, just to appreciate what you're saying about the, the percentages uh, and the, the assurances are noted uh, for the, to get to the 90% KPI. Uh, so, so the recommendations as proposed in the report, could you just ask for proposed that and seconder? Uh, pros, uh, Councillor Clark, seconder. Councillor Thurgood, all those in favour? Unanimous. Uh, moving on to item number five, which is the risk management quarterly update and quarter three. Uh, and I'd like to hand over to the Assistant Director of Finance, please. Thank you. Thank you. So this is the regular quarterly risk management update for the committee for quarter three of the 23-24 financial year. One of the functions of the Audit and Governance Committee is to monitor the effectiveness of the, of the authority's strategic risk management arrangements. This report includes the actions taken to manage those risks and raises issues of concern that may impact the authority. Corporate risks are identified, managed and monitored by the corporate management team on a quarterly basis. The Corporate Risk Register has been reviewed and current risk scores and notes have been updated by CMT for quarter three reporting and a copy of the current Corporate Risk Register is attached at Appendix 1. There has been no change to the overall Corporate Risk Profile since quarter two, which is in Appendix 2, the Risk Matrix Summary. Members were invited to attend a Risk Management Awareness Workshop provided by Zurich Municipal on the 4th of December last year. The course was attended by 12 councillors and covered the following areas. Understanding the importance and relevance of risk management, Tamworth risk management principles and process, the key risks for Tamworth and the role of members in supporting effective risk management. Zurich Municipal have also completed an independent review of the council's risk management strategy and policy, which is attached at Appendix 3. The areas highlighted in yellow are new additions or updates to the existing document which have been reviewed and approved by CMT but now require consideration and sign off from Audit and Governance Committee. The updates mainly relate to risk management definitions and processes around the identification and analysis of risk. A policy on a page document has also been produced as a quick reference point to support officers with risk management responsibilities. And that's attached at Appendix 4. This document will be uploaded to the Info Zone and circulated to all departments to support with the ongoing work on reviewing operational risks. The committee is asked to endorse the Corporate Risk Register and approve the revised risk management policy and strategy. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you for that. Uh, anybody, any questions? Uh, it was just a couple of comments, really. I was at the training and I found it really... Uh, beneficial. Also what's beneficial is the policy on a page and it would be really nice if there could be more produced in, in that format. Um, so moving on to the recommendations that are in the reports that the committee endorse the corporate risk register that the committee review and approve the revised corporate risk strategy slash policy. Look for a mover. Councillor Clark. Seconder. 
Cancel the door. Uh, all those in favour? Unanimous. So item number six is the audit committee effectiveness and I'll hand over to the audit manager, please. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to present my report to this committee on the annual self-evaluation completed on the effectiveness of the committee as measured against SIT for published guidance on the function and operation of audit committees. I ask that the committee reviews the attached self-evaluation and considers whether any further actions are required to improve the committee's effectiveness. Additionally, I've provided an update position regarding the appointment of an independent member to this committee. The self-assessment is contained as Appendix 3 of my report and highlights two areas for consideration, the appointment of an independent member and structured feedback to this committee on its operation. The current self-evaluation score of 196 out of 200 compares well with other authority audit committees of the same makeup and constitution. It is proposed that in May or June 2024, a further skills audit of the committee's membership is completed. I also wish to provide an update to the committee in respect to the appointment of an independent member. The role was advertised on WM Jobs in late November 2023, with a closing date of the 22nd of December 2023. Unfortunately, we had no applicants apply for the position. Following initial discussions with senior management, I'm considering a review of the role specification to highlight more specifically governance aspects of the role, consider remuneration and the potential for a joint working arrangement between other Staffordshire authorities. I will keep both the chair of the committee and also members aware of any developments as they occur. I'm more than happy to take any questions that you may have. Cheers, thank you. Anybody got any, any questions on that? I know there was a few last time about independent members. Councillor um, Pritchard. I think part of part of the issue in relation to that is obviously as as you've said we we've tried we're not getting any any responses in in relation to that the the other side of that is that sitfa have sort of issued best practice that there should be independent member or members on audit committees for local authorities so again that we've we've obviously gone out and we've tried i think probably the, the the progress next to have a look at maybe the, the 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 specification or the job profile in relation to the internal audit member see if we do get any fur further um, applications and again consider as I say remuneration I think the difficulty is is if we if we're in that position where we don't try to get an independent member then we could be seen at a later date if that guidance from SIPFA is made mandatory, we then fall non-compliant against that, that guidance. Uh, I, I, understand, I understand that. Um, I say I've been, been around a long time and I've seen many independent members come and go. Um, uh, I, uh, I just think it's, it's something people are just not interested in um, I understand when we go down the road then let's let's remunerate them well then at what point do they become councillors we're, we're in essence appointing people to a committee to take part who have who are not democratically accountable in any way um, at the end of the day you know the members are democratically accountable to the public um, you know if there's little interest in it I would just not bother flogging a dead horse and I'm, I'm quite against then you know, we've we've gone out there. Nobody's interested, so let's offer more or let's offer. You know, it, it just seems to be a waste of our time and effort um, trying to trying to recruit somebody. And ag again, you know, everything we're doing is most of this stuff is public anyway. You know, it's it's there aren't many confidential reports to this committee. Um, the public can come. You know, there's there's no public here. I, if people are interested, I think we'd uh, we'd find them. I understand. You know, SIPFA may change. The guidance in the future but at the moment it is and it's, it's best practice and there's a difference between best practice and legislation 
Um, at the moment, I consider, you know, and uh, we tried. Nobody's interested. Let's move on. Yeah, totally under understand what you're saying there. Um, but then on, on the other side, I understand about the best best practice. So would a, a pause maybe for a year, as opposed to rehashing it every single year? Because surely that 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 isn't the best best of officer time, really, is it? To to keep putting up applications out. Is everyone? Professor Ferber. Thanks, Chair. Um, don't disagree with what uh, Councillor Pritchard is saying. Um, looking at across Staffordshire, um, you mentioned something about a collaborative approach. Um, do we know what other district councils, borough councils, uh, sorry, councils are doing? Um, and is the mileage in actually appointing a Staffordshire County independent member that is prepared, to, or South Staffordshire, that is prepared to come along and uh, sit on it, thus allowing us to comply with SIPFA um, recommendation? Thank you. Currently, from sort of discussions with the Staffordshire Chief Auditors Group, there's only one independent member currently within a within, within a district, effectively within Staffordshire, and that is a joint working arrangement between Staffordshire Moorlands and High Peak, which is across the border in in Derbyshire. All the other authorities are in a similar in a similar position in in looking to to actually go out or looking for independent members at the moment. And I know specifically that Litchfield is also in that position at the uh, presently. And again, there's similar sort of arrangement, shall we say, in mid Staffordshire when you look at Cannock Chase and also Stafford Borough as well in, in relation to that. From the, those discussions with, with Staff, Staffordshire Chief Auditors, there hasn't been sort of an indication for an authority wide, as far as I'm, I'm aware, in respect of that. Um, but again, I can I can obviously take that back to Staff, Staffordshire Chief Auditors and see see what the um, whether or not there's any appetite in relation to doing that. Thank you. Um, the other thought was um, within sit for recommendations, um, good or well, best practice is to have a, an independent auditor. Is it worth actually if we're performing quite well? And ourselves, is it worth actually collectively going back to SIPFA and saying, well, can you reconsider either the need for one or the um, the fact that some um, borough councils could actually then start to remunerate um, suitable people? In other words, change the rules slightly to, to make it work. I would have to actually have, go back and have a look at look at that in relation to sort of the SIP for guidance and any changes that we could influence um, sort of going forward on on that. Um, I think again, I think when when you look at the SIP for guidance and read through the SIP for guidance, I think a lot of it is for shall we say larger authorities, metropolitan boroughs, for example, and, and from that side. Again, I think this is the difficulty that we, I suppose, partly have is that from the sit for best practice guidance, we've been lumped, shall we say, together with, with those. And again, when it's coming out and saying two independent members, the difficulty then is getting two, two people to apply effectively in, in relation to that. But again, I can take that forward and, and have a look in relation to that, Councillor Thurgood. Pritchard. Thank you. Two points then, sort of one on the back of that. Um, you know, I'd move a recommendation that we push back. You know, we, we make representation to, to sit for that it's not really, um, should we say, um, it's not been very productive for us to try and do that as a small district council. Um, perhaps the second would be, well, we could we reach out to our neighbours and propose a, a member swap? So we appoint a member of our committee to theirs and because they have an audit committee um, and they appoint a member of their committee to ours and that would not only be some kind of external 
independent member who's actually still a uh, there's still a local authority member just over the border and we do have a close relationship with Litchfield um, but also it could perpetuate some best practice as well because then you've got a member from a different authority potentially asking different questions that we may not have thought of and vice versa. In relation to that, I, I think the difficulty in, in relation to that is the fact that the independent member has to be non-political as, as, as a person. So effectively doing a member swap wouldn't necessarily fulfil that as, as an independent member as such. I don't know. We'd have to take that back, I think, in relation to that. And again, um, I've not yet met an independent member who's been part of any of our committees who is not a politically active. <laughs> they, they, may, they may not wear a label, but they're very politically active. And I think you will only attract people who are politically active or interested in politics. And, um, you know, I, I, that's why I think maybe a, a member swap, if they were willing, might be a good idea. It kind of it's a halfway house. Um, because when they're in this room, they are they're independent. They're not they're not part of this authority. They're they're a critical eye from a neighbouring authority. We can we can obviously take that take that forward and then then come back to the committee in relation to that. Thank you. Did you want that as a full motion recommendation? Uh, somebody to second them. Okay. Councillor Dorf. All those in favour? Unanimous. Uh, item number seven is the Constitution Scheme of Delegation update, and I'll pass over to the monitoring officer, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, the purpose of the report this evening is to advise committee of the updates reflected in the Council's constitution. Uh, the Council's constitution is a working document which sets out how the Council operates, how decisions are made and the procedures which are followed to ensure these are efficient, transparent and accountable to the local people. Now, some of these processes are required by law, while others are matter for the Council to choose. The Council's constitution was last reviewed and implemented in December 2020. And under the requirements of Article 16, a review of the Constitution has been undertaken to ensure it is fit for purpose. Um, a number of amendments have been identified, and these are highlighted in Appendix 1, with a tabled summary in Appendix 2. It should be noted that the Constitution has not been subject to a complete constitutional review, with only the proposed amendments subject to consideration, and therefore a continued review of the Constitution should be maintained to ensure compliance with the Council's duties. At the request of the committee in the um, meeting of November, uh, a working group was held uh, at the beginning of December where we discussed these uh, amendments that were identified in Appendix 2. Uh, the changes do centre um, around a change in job title, um, some enhanced wording from legislation updates, policy endorsements and overall formatting. Um, it is asked this evening for the committee to endorse and recommend to the Council the adoption of the changes for the Constitution and I'm happy to take any questions. Cheers, thank you for that. Uh, anybody got any questions or comments? Uh, again, just a comment. I think it was just a good opportunity in the end of last year for, for the more broader membership of the council to to be part of that working group as opposed to just ourselves. So I, th I thought that was really beneficial. Uh, Councillor Pritchard? Yeah, um, I say I, I, I won't be voting for this myself. I'm just disappointed with the changes around the, the Housing and Homelessness Board because it's a real loss of um, decision making ability for ordinary backbench councillors. You know, the, the committee was originally set up to empower backbenchers to be part of, um, you know, sort of an executive level decision making function. So I think it's a real shame that that's, that's basically been watered down into um, a very small body. Um, so I, I can't support that particular change, I'm afraid. Any more comments or questions? Nope. I don't want to do this. So apart from that one point, uh, Councillor Pritchard, you're happy with the, the other recommendations? Yeah. 
Um, with regards to the Housing Advisory Board, um, legally, we, it cannot be constitutional, it cannot be a committee, because um, they won't have the voting rights. And I think when there was a discussion with regards to that, it was about the independent people attending that meeting to also have voting rights. In order to be able to do that, it, it needed to be an advisory board rather than a committee. So we, they had to have a look at with the requirements from that side. So hence the uh, reason why they made this into an advisory board. I say it's a, it's a, I disagree with the changes in general because of what the committee was originally set up to be something different and I don't agree with what it's become. It was supposed to empower the backbenchers to be able to make you know, decisions effectively as a cabinet member and that's the, 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 what it's been changed into is something different to what was originally was being set up as. Uh, Would do you be happy with that, Councillor Pritchard? So that so. You don't need to change it on my account. That's fine. I'm happy to vote against it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, look for a. So the recommendations in the report are to endorse and recommend to council the adoption of changes to the constitution which are necessary following staff changes and policy amendments. The report also includes other constitutional changes to improve the council's governance. Uh, number two. Changes to the Constitution are highlighted in detail in the draft working copy, Appendix 1, with a summary of changes at Appendix 2. Uh, look for a mover and a seconder for them. Uh, main Council Clerk. All those in favour? Against? That's moved. Uh, and carried. Uh, item number eight is the Audit and Governance Committee timetable. Uh, discussion item, um, basically the committee timetable has been passed around. Uh, has anybody got any comments on it? No? Do you want to make any comments on it, Andrew? Or? No. no. That's fine. We'll continue continue on with the timetable as as it as it is in relation to that. Okay. Okay then. Uh, item number nine is exclusion of the press and public. To consider excluding the press and public from the meeting by passing the following resolution: that in accordance with the provisions of the local authorities' executive arrangements, meeting and access to information, England, regulations 2012 and section 100A4 of the Local Government Act 1972. The press and public be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of schedule 12a to the act and the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public in interest in disclosing the information to the public. Uh, mover and a second for that. Uh, Councillor Clark and Councillor Price. All those in favour? Unanimous. Uh, 